How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcano, and I am a first year family medicine resident practicing here in Canada. Today, I'm joined by Emily. And a few weeks back, I think it was about two weeks ago now, I put out a video going over some tips from some 528 MCAT scores that I had met throughout my time in YouTube. But one of the things that I really wanted to do was have a sit down chat with someone that scored very, very highly on the MCAT. And thankfully we had Emily reach out and contact me and say that she'd love to share some of her tips, how she studied, the resources that she used. And I think that it's so important for people that do have these different, really interesting experiences to share what they've learned for everyone. And that way we could all hopefully do a little bit better on this test, which really is just so important. So Emily, I will toss it to you. If you don't mind, if you could just tell our audience a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, what's going on right now. Yeah, for sure. So thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Emily and I um, am from the Bay Area originally in California and then went to school in, at UCLA studying cognitive science with a computing spec. And I also did a lot of business while I was an undergrad, but have always been interested in healthcare in general because I wanted to help people and growing up for the Bay, and being Asian, I feel like a lot of families are like, you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, a business person, or a computer scientist. And I wanted to help people. So that's why I chose medicine. And I have been flip-flopping all throughout college of what I really wanted to do, but ultimately decided to go with pre-med and took the MCAT last summer. Um, and one fun thing about me is I like to paint shoes on my free time. So I have leather paint at home and then I like to paint Air Forces in my free time. That's so awesome. That's really cool. You Okay, two things I want to touch on there. Number one, the Air Force painting. I myself need to actually get into that hobby. Me and my brother were talking about the other day. But uh, yeah, that's just interesting fun fact. But also, you wrote the MCAT and you killed it. I have to say, with a score of 528, when you go ahead and you break down the stats, it really is something special. And there's a lot of stuff that I have to ask you about that. But you're, you are still in undergrad or did you graduate? Where do you sit right now? Yeah, so I just graduated in June and then I am taking some time to work in business um, before I apply to med school. Good stuff. Good stuff. Do you have any first choices or any places you're looking at or just wherever for now? Um, I feel like with a high score, you want to go to specific schools, but I'm also really interested in healthcare informatics and health systems sciences. So those kinds of schools that do like public health kind of things health system, like big picture stuff and like informatics and tech, like those are the types of schools I want to go to. Perfect. Okay. If it's okay with you, then I, I want to get into some of the stuff about the MCAT. So I, I think if I understood correctly, you wrote the MCAT, was it just one time you wrote? Yeah. Okay. And when you wrote it, did you do anything before the preparation started? Because some people talk about the whole active part of preparation where it's their dedicated study, but then before then they're doing some passive reading. Did you do anything like that? Um, no, so I think like, thankfully, my university prepared me really well. And I remember taking a biochem, like the biochem class that you have to take. Um, my professor was very hard and very scary. And like the second week of class, we had to draw out and write out all the amino acids. We then had to write out all the enzyme like mechanics. And then we had to like draw out the glycolysis molecules and name them in like 10 minutes. And all these kinds of things. So I feel like for biochem specifically, I just had by like doing my schooling, it helped a lot. Um, so I, there was nothing that I did before like I started studying. Got it. And biochem is one of those killer areas, unfortunately, for the MCAT. So you had a strong fundamental with some of the courses that you took. Yeah. Even though I took biochem like approximately a year before I started studying, I think by learning it really well the first time, picking it up the second time made it a lot easier. Got it. Okay. Um, so then what was your actual practice? What, what was the prep like for you? And how did you get ready for it? You wrote it the first time, you knocked it out of the park. I'll, I'll pass the ball to you. Let us know in your opinion, how you think you did that. Well, I definitely wasn't expecting to get a 528. Um, I was looking for a 520 as I feel like a lot of people are looking for that kind of score. Um, I studied for nine months, so I had gotten an internship for like a business type of thing in October, my junior year. And I knew that I wanted to like take the MCAT my junior year as well, like in the summertime, which I feel like anyone who's taking a gap year wants to take it or most people their junior year summer end up taking the MCAT because they want to take one to two gap years. I feel like it's like the perfect time to take it. You've taken almost or all of your pre-med classes. 
and it's like dedicated time, but I knew I didn't have that. So I started studying in December of my junior year during winter break. And then I relaxed, chilled through content review for six months Mm -hmm. from December all the way to when school ended in June. And because UCLA is, UCLA is a quarter system school. So we end in June and then I started my internship. Right. And then I was studying more throughout my internship. And then I didn't get dedicated study time until one month for f- one month before the MCAT. And right. then I studied like crazy, like the standard, like eight to 10 hours a day, right. that one month before my actual test. So if I'm trying to keep track, you, you did one month of dedicated hardcore studying and yeah. seven, eight months of like passive in between classes and stuff. Yes. And I would say the six months, like the, I think the, like one of my tips, I know we're going to talk about that more is like trying to find happiness or being as like mentally well as you possibly can be outside of MCATing because everybody knows like how not fun MCAT study is. It's stressful. You feel like crap a lot of the time. And I feel like you, if you like scroll through Reddit, there's like people who are posting like, oh my God, this is how you do it. Or like, I did so well. And that can be like kind of demoralizing. Um, But I feel like I went on hikes with my friends. I cooked with my family because it was COVID too. So I didn't have, I lived at home, which I also think was really helpful. But I think by relaxing and I took like two weeks off to do midterms, like two weeks off to do finals. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of study where I was doing as much as I could, like maybe two hours a day, five days a week, Mm -hmm. um, that was helpful. And then just like slowly chugging through it without like getting burnt out, I think was really helpful. Okay. I, I definitely, in my opinion, and some of the, the students that I spoke to, there's this like dichotomy, right? Like there are some people that really just want to guns blazing four months straight and, and get it done. But it seems like this method really helped for you. And that last month, was that filled with like practice uh, tests and things like that too? Yeah. So over the summer, like starting in June, I had started taking practice tests every weekend. So my Saturdays was like the practice test, which is what, like seven, eight hours. And then the Sunday I would wake up. I would Oh, also my practice test I took in the afternoon because when I took the MCAT, there was still like the PM time. So I just like woke up in the morning, chilled and then ate lunch, chilled some more, then took the practice test. Okay. And then Sunday I would wake up, go on a hike, come back and then study for like review my test for seven to eight hours. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people might not be reviewing so in depth where they review their right answers and their wrong answers. But I feel like it's really important. Like anytime you're guessing, anytime you're not exactly sure, or even if you know what the right answer is, but you don't recognize one of the other terms that were the wrong answer, I think there's like a lot to learn there. And I think that way you're maximizing your practice tests. Um, so you're really learning from it. So you're saying something that that I've heard a few times now, and that is that the review is almost just as important, if not more important than the practice test itself. Yes, for sure. And I think on top of that, like I know a lot of people use UWorld and I do too. I did too. Um, I really actually hated UWorld while I was doing it because I was really scared of like the percentages I was getting. I distinctly remember getting a 50% on OCHEM one time and like, basically in tears being like, well, I don't think I can take this test. Um, I think the reality is like one world has really good explanations, right? Um, Then it's more about, did I like, if I'm learning, it's like tricking your brain into thinking like, if I'm learning every single question I got wrong, then I basically got a hundred percent right instead of a 50. And then that's like a lot more motivating to like keep studying. Yes. Big time. And you know, myself, on this channel, I've talked about you world in the past, and it's definitely one of the resources that people bring up over and over again. I used it when I was prepping for the step exams. I never used it for the MCAT. So maybe let's talk about the resources that you used in prep. I know since I wrote the exam, I wrote it three years ago now. I got a 517 when I wrote, but you're right, grade inflation is such that three years ago, we were all shooting for like a 515. Now, 520 is really that bar that people are trying to set for those upper tier scores. So tell me a little bit about the resources and what you used. Yeah, for sure. So I, one, I self-studied and I used the Kaplan books. Um, I think TPR I know is way more in depth. And this is something else I realized is I never studied low yield material. And I don't think you really need to, which is kind of a hot take because I feel like I've heard a lot on like different Reddit posts and channels and such that if you want a 520 plus, 
you mm. really need to know low yield material. Mm. In my experience, for example, like there's the non laminar flow where it's like something is like the flow rate is related to like R to the fourth rather than right. something else. And I'm like, for me, like high yield material is knowing that it's related to the R to the fourth, but it's low yield material to know the exact equation. And mm -hmm. I remember on like, I remember like doing a lot of practice tests and such, like you need to know the relationship, but you don't need to know the equation because if they're going to give you a question or you need to do math, they would just give it to you. And, and so I, I think, think that's right. You know, when it comes to memorizing the form, sorry to cut you off. I, I just yeah. also remember that too. And doing practice questions, if it is some abstract formula, more often than not, they will give it to you. Now, you, you do need to know a good amount of formulas, but some of those more abstract ones, you could get away with expecting them to give it to you. Yeah, exactly. And I think even like some of the constants, like six times, what like Planck's constant, sometimes they give it to you. Yeah. So I feel like it's, I think TPR sometimes can go too in depth and Kaplan was like good enough for me. But okay. I think on top of that, um, I think a lot of me and my friends, we all relate to, we got through content review and didn't feel like we learned anything. And that is totally okay because I think you actually start learning when you do practice questions. And there are so many questions on the MCAT that are actually just can you understand what the passage has given you rather than applying some like random concept that you remember reading in a Kaplan textbook. Um, and then on top of that, I know a lot of people are in love with Anki and they will swear by their Anki decks. But personally, I have always been a note taker and I took notes on Kaplan and I tried, I actually genuinely tried to do Anki and make my own flashcards and I just epically failed and it was not getting me anywhere. So I was like, okay, let me just do what I, I feel like I enjoy to do. Um, and then I did use Mile Down, like the Reddit, some, some wonderful human or wonderful group of humans have put up their own Anki decks. And I did use that for Psych Soj as well as the 300 page doc that I feel like a lot of people have used. Right. Um, those were the resources I used for content review. And then I used UWorld. And then I also did a little bit of Jack Weston for cars. Mm -hmm. But I feel like honestly, learning cars was just mostly through doing AMC practice. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to AMC. Like that is the holy grail of all practice and I think I I started doing it like three to four weeks out, like just when I started my dedicated study mm -hmm. and it really helped me so much because I think I was taking the test blind doing the practice test. And then as I was doing more questions, I feel like I developed my own strategy of how to take the test. And I feel like there's so many people with different strategies and I definitely will be sharing some of my own, but I think it's more important to have the one that works for you that you came up with because it's easier to remember what you want to do naturally than remember what some random person on the internet told you to do got it two months out from the exam the one month was your hardcore studying but two months out what were your practice scores looking like uh i was already 520 plus or were there still no, i I did next. Oh, I oh my practice practice tests. I used um, Kaplan at first because those are free with the books. Right. And then I was I think I was doing like five ten ish. And then I switched to next step. I also did the next step diagnostic right when I started studying, and I actually did. I, I like got like a five oh seven or five oh eight. Okay. So I feel like I was pretty solid at the beginning. Um, okay. and then I oh the I took the. TPR free test because I had one week to kill and I used it on that and I had gone from like a 512 to like a 505 and I thought I learned nothing and then I and then my friends were like Emily it's free because they want you to sign up for the classes so don't worry about doing horribly because it's okay and then I got to blueprint like two months out I was using blueprint and then I was scoring like 512s ish Okay. And then the moment, and then I took the sample before I started my dedicated review and like, you know, there's like Reddit translator or like converters. Um, I think I was in like the high teens. And then when I actually did the practice full length, I got 521s and 522s. Awesome. Really cool. I, I, I like that you touched on all the different resources that you use. And likewise, I never got on board the Anki train for MCAT. Reddit people are amazing. I love Reddit people for sharing their decks and that psych uh, psychology 300 page document is amazing. But I'm with you. I, I took handwritten notes and it worked for me. Moving on now, if if someone was going to do the Emily study method for 528 on the MCAT, right? What does that look like? How, break it down in a week when you were still not doing full time studying and then in a week when you were doing full time studying. 
Yeah, for sure. So in a week that I wasn't doing full, I'll split into three sections, like while I was studying during school, while I was studying during work, because I know some people are working while they're studying and then I'll like dedicated study time. So I feel like during school, I was still stressed out about my midterms and finals. So I tried to do two to two hours a day of like one subject. So trying to go through any amount of Kaplan that I could. Um, I think the reality is, I know some people can like really read fast through chapters, but especially with note taking, I find that like I couldn't get through a chapter in a day. Um, It was pretty slow and I was okay with being slow because I really wanted to understand what was going on. Um, And then I think anytime I had tests, I basically stopped studying and I just feel like I, you know, everyone tells you like quality over quantity. I truly tried to trick my brain into agreeing with that okay. uh, and then going into when I was interning so I interned probably from eight to five every day like a full-time internship or like a job and then I would go on a walk from five to six p.m I would come home eat dinner slash shower from like six to eight slash mm-hmm. break a little and then I would study from eight to twelve a.m every like Monday through Friday and I take the test Saturday and then study on Sunday so it's a pretty rough schedule definitely Sounds um, rough. Then, hmm sounds rough yeah yeah um but then i think i i what i realized when i was doing practice questions or like i tried to do u world and i just like was not going well for me um and so i realized i just didn't know enough about bio specifically so then i went back and then basically took notes on my notes and i did that during school too like anytime i the way i studied for finals for school was that i would have my notes and i would just like either rewrite notes that are more shortened or i would outline my old notes and so i did that again with kaplan and my already made notes and that really helped me solidify like random like how the kidneys function or what the loop penley is things like that um and then when i got to like dedicated study time i would probably wake up around nine eat breakfast, go on a walk. I'm a really huge walker. Like that really helped me. I would put on a Harry Potter podcast and just like, like go on a mile walk. Um, Cause it like really helped clear my brain. Right. And I would study from like 10 to tw- two, maybe eat two to three, study again from three to seven, eat again from seven to eight, probably relax a little bit, do a little bit more reading. I, especially at, like at night, I feel like the 300 page doc or like the 75 condensed page doc or whatever is really like good night reading <laughs> because it's not too intensive, but it's still nice to like refresh, like what the Erickson different stages of blah, blah are. Right. Um, and then my last week, I actually got through AMC pretty fast because I was doing like 200 practice questions a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went through it pretty fast and did them twice actually, um, especially for the section banks and QPACs. And I, I think some people are like, oh, you shouldn't like try to go through content, like the same questions twice because you might remember them. But I think for me, it was even if I remember the question, it's I would answer it because I understood what was going on rather than caring about any percentages or things like that. Um, And then for my actual test day, because I took it in the afternoon, it was amazing. I got to wake up at like 10 a.m. I went on an hour long walk. (laughs) My parents made me lunch and then they uh, they they drove me and I told them, you cannot ask me how it went. I will tell you if I'd like, and if not, then you're not gonna say anything. And then I I took the MCAT. That that's that's awesome. And, and you know, so many similar I, I feel like when people listen to this conversation that we're having, right? So much of what you say resonates with all students who go through the test. It's a terrible test. The prep is very, very intense and you make it through on the other side. And you, at least for me, I just blanked. I didn't want to talk about yeah. it. I didn't want to remember the questions, right? And they went through the, like this three-day amnesia post-exam that I didn't want to just think about it at all. But thanks for, for sharing all of that. I, I have to ask as we make our way maybe towards the end of this now, and I will leave your Instagram in the, the comment section below. I believe you yourself are an MCAT tutor. I, I don't know if you want to share a little bit more about that later. But the last thing I want to ask is, do you have any particular tips that you think are unique to you? Because I've made many videos on the MCAT in the past. A lot of students have told me that what I've shared has helped. And I like to believe that the stuff I put out there is genuinely trying to help. But sometimes people know better, right? So so what's something that maybe most people don't talk about that people need to know? 
Yeah, so I think I have, I already touched about like the self-care happiness yep. thing and that I feel like I didn't hear when I was studying, um, but I have I two totally other things. That, by the way, that's so important, right? Trying to take care of your mental health and to draw back on some of the psychology principles from before and the whole uh, arousal curve and how you need to Yes, you're after. exhausted. Yeah, exactly. All these years later, it's still burned in my mind, right? We didn't really talk about it in med school, but that's, that's so important to take care of yourself and I'm glad you're touching on that, but please keep going. Yeah, but I have two other main tips. And I think um, the first one is focus on the big picture. Um, and this is something I tell my students all the time is if you're in a car's passage, once you read it, can you tell me what the thesis or one sentence takeaway is? And does the author like it, dislike it? Does he think he's this person is stupid? Does he think this idea is super amazing? Like what are like what in general does he feel about this topic? And then second, um, like if you are practicing, can you like within this like big picture tip, can you identify whether you found it hard or easy? When I went through the test, I actually, I used a ton of scratch paper. I think I went through like three or four books and okay. a secret, a not so secret is like, you just give your old book and they give you a brand new one. So don't worry about wasting scratch paper. Totally fine. And then I like wrote like, here are the nine passages. I rated them from easy, medium to hard for each one as I went through, wrote yeah. which questions they were. And then that way, when I'm going back and reviewing my work, I feel like for cars, especially, it's either you get all of them or you get none of them because you had no idea what was going on. Okay. And so instead of focusing on flagged hard questions, right. I focus on flagged hard passages. Got it. So it, then I could like, because I feel like a lot of the questions are like, what's the main idea? Uh, then it's like, if I gave you more information, how would this change the author's blah, 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 which yeah. is again, another type of what's the main idea kind of question. Right. Um, so I think that was helpful. Um, and then on the bio or any experimental passage side, I feel like I didn't get good practice on that until like, like one to two weeks before my actual test. And I think by doing those questions, I figured out that experimental questions, like you need to read the graphs. Like if you don't read the graphs, you're going to be completely lost because a lot of it is like which independent variable is related to this dependent variable and things like that so what i ended up doing for my test was i had again like written the like here's passage one passage two passage three and then i would write out here's the iv here's the dv and here's the result or the trend and i think again it's like basically the same idea as cars right it's like what's the main idea of the passage i think especially with there's so many big words on the passages and you're like, I have never heard of this blah, 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 kinase. But then you know that it's a kinase. Exactly. But the fact that there's like so many other long words right before that, I feel like just it's daunting and makes you like kind of overthink, like, do I not know anything? I have no idea what's going on. But if you can identify what the axes are in the graphs and what the graphs are trying to tell you, I feel like you can get through a lot of those passages. So speaking the MCAT language is, is what I kind of sum it down to. Would you agree with that a little bit? Learning the ins and outs. And if you see the word, the, like the root word, you know what it is. Would you yeah. say good? Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't need to know exactly what's what's going on all the time to be right. like, that's a kinase. Great. I know what it does. Okay. Fair. And then last, my other big tip is like to talk it out. So I come from like a business background as well. And in business interviews, a lot of the times they, they make you case. And so they give you a business question and you solve it with the interviewer. Okay. And uh, there's a ton of math involved and you have to do the math by hand. And um, people tell you that you should just do your math with them. So you basically say like five times four is 20. I carry the two, blah, blah, blah. And I think that when I was going through that interview process, I learned that it helped me stop overthinking. And I think similarly applying that to the MCAT, um, by talking it out in your brain, obviously, like you shouldn't be talking during the test, but if you can verbally hear, like you can hear it in your brain as you're going through the questions, I feel like it just slows your mind down when a lot of people like me, like used to overthink, like I can't choose between these like two answers. I'm like, okay, let me try to slow it down and explain it to myself. Mm -hmm. Emily, thanks so much for sharing all that. It, to me, it's really interesting to hear how you came at studying and the tips that you use and how it's different and the crossover and stuff. So it was even a really good learning experience for me, definitely in talking to you. Um, so, so honestly, thanks so much for agreeing to come on and sharing all these tips. Guys, to anyone watching right now, go ahead and leave all your questions, comments in the description below. I'll try my best to answer. Emily could float by and answer them if she sees some, but also I will leave her Instagram or contact information in the description 
description, feel free to reach out to her. I don't know if you are taking more students to mentor in the future, but that's always a, a possibility as well. Yeah, for sure. Reach out awesome. to me. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for stopping by today and um, good luck with, with studying because Emily knows that it's rough. I know that it's rough. Three years later, I still get flashbacks and hearing her talk about it, right? But uh, you're going to come out better on the other side. Best of luck and uh, everyone take care. Thank you so much for having me.